Hello everyone, Kevin Stevenson here with GetMeToGeek.com and today we're going to talk about PFSense. Yes, that's right, the firewall that you should be using in your business. Uh, I'm a big fan of this firewall. It is our go-to firewall and today we're going to just do a quick unboxing of the SG1100 and I'm going to show you how to do connect to it via serial console. So let's get going. Here we go. This is our box. So let's just go ahead and open that guy up. If you buy the SG-11, it's going to look something like this. 1100. You can open her up like this. In your box, you are going to find power supply. And this here, this is the important USB cable. So it is a micro micro USB for PFSense and stickers. Yes, yeah, so if you can put them stickers in on your stuff, that will be exciting. All right, let's set this aside. So here we have. Oh, I just lost some feet. Okay, so here we have the SB 1100 in the flesh. Um, it's a nice shiny box. It's it's only, so if you take a look at it here, let me switch uh, the full overhead. So I'll take this, put it on our measurements. You can see that, well, I just take it on the five inches there, we got one, two, three, four and a half inches. So it's only about four and a half inches. Um, same thing when you go and you take and look at the other side, it's one, two, three and a half. So it's only four and a half by three and a half inches. That's pretty, pretty small, uh, which is great. And here's the thing, this thing is pretty powerful. So on the one side, you have USB. And USB. Then we have the WAN port, the LAN port, and an optional port. So you can reassign these things. So like if you have a you know WAN WAN failover, you can use this port. Or if you need a, a secondary switch uh, or secondary port that you want to have a, a, a completely separate LAN, you can do that too. On the back side, we have the power, and then we have the serial console. It is passively cooled. And if you take the feet off of here, you will find the screws. So, yep. If you need to take this apart, you can do that. Um, I don't really recommend it unless you absolutely need to get in there. There's not a whole lot you can do inside this guy when if you do that. Okay, so there we have it. So what we're going to do now is plug in the power. There's LEDs on top of here for the green circle, blue, square, and black diamond. So really what that does is this kind of square corresponds to these ports. Um, turn her on. Here we have the USB cord. And you can plug it in right here. And then you plug this into your USB port on your computer. Now we'll switch over to the desktop and open up the device manager. And this is going to show you a USB controller. So let's go ahead and update to the driver, search automatically online, um, and in theory, it's going to find it. So when it can't find it, we're just going to go over here to NetGate's website and search for the driver. Right. So here we are on the website, and they have pretty good documentation. So we're going to select SG1100 How To's and um, connecting to console port. All right, and that's where you're gonna find the drivers. 
So you've got Windows, Mac, Linux, and FreeBSD. So you're good either way. Um, this is the prolific chipset. So we're going to click available download. Prolific. Uh, let's see what we get. Um, uh, whoops. Let's just do that in a new. Here it says it should automatically install, but in my case, in Windows 10, it didn't. So let's look for the 2303. Here it is. Um, here we go. Finally, we found it. Now, if you notice, it says Windows driver install setup program. So if I had taken this and did this, wait, I got it here real soon. So let's download this. All right, so here they are. We'll go back over here and basically we just need to install this driver. So chipset for driver. Let me do that. Boom. Looky there. Now we have our, now we have our chip. Our driver. Okay. So that's that's what that's what you need to do. Set that. Second of all, because this is serial communications, you're gonna to need to scroll on down to, to Putty and Windows. And here's what we're gonna do. So I have Putty on here. And basically you're going to set this up. You click on the serial over here. Also go back into your device manager and take note of the COM port. COM port three is the one we're gonna be needing to use. So we change this to a three, this to 115.2, and open. If you don't get that, then it could be that you need to reboot it or something like that. Or it could be that I don't have all the rest of the settings set up correctly. But more than likely, I'm just gonna power cycle this guy and see if this happens again. Oh, look, there it is. We're connected to the terminal. Going to make this appear larger. Okay, there we have it. It is fully booted up. <laughs> so you can go to the PFSense documentations at NetGate and go ahead and click PFSense software configuration and then go to the console menu basics. And in here, it's going to show you all the different things that you can do from the console. First thing you are presented with is a screen that looks like this here, which is your WAN and your LAN configuration uh, up here and then the different menu items. So if we switch back over to our unit, you will see that this is a SG1100. It'll give you the NetGate serial and the crypto stuff and blah, blah, blah. It will also tell you what version and that this is an ARM64 device. So if you're wanting to put PFSense on an ARM device, your only choice is to purchase the hardware from them at this point in time. I do not believe they support installing it on a Raspberry Pi or anything such as that. So just keep that in mind. However, this SG1100 is great. So our WAN is set up to this port here, LAN on this port, and OPT is this port. If you remember, and we'll flip back over here real quick to the overhead, <coughs> that those ports are labeled WAN, LAN, and OPT. Okay, so I'm just going to go over these real quick. Zero is logout, SSH only. Obviously, we are actually serial constant in there, so you can turn on SSH uh, to access this menus and the PFSense. Number one lets you assign the interfaces. Back up here in the beginning where we have opt, uh, WAN, LAN, and opt, and, and these interfaces that are assigned, this is where no, menu one is where you can change that. And now menu number two is where you can set the interfaces IP addresses. So as you can see over here, LAN is set to 
slash 24 network uh, IPv4. That is where you can change that. Number three, and this is a good one here, is the reset the web configuration password. So if you get yourself locked out, you know, this is something you can do. It is to log into the console, take it, this thing, set back up. Okay. Number four is to factory reset to default. So if you get a, get a PFSense and you know, you need to just start all over, go ahead, console in, hit this number four and go through that. Number five, you can force a reboot. Number six, you can force to turn off. Okay. Then seven ping host. Uh, it's just a pinging. Uh, eight is a shell. So if you need to get to the shell, uh, directly to the shell of the PFSense, just like uh, like you would a Linux box or a FreeBSD box. Number nine, PF top. Uh, familiar with top? There you go. Similar similar to that. Um, filter logs. Restart the web configurator. PHP shell. PHP uh, PFSense tools. Uh, you know, update the console, enable SSH. So if you remember, and just a minute ago I said you could turn on SSH, you can console in, turn on SSH, and then you can uh, do connect to this thing via your putty or just straight up SSH. Um, restore recent configuration. So uh, this has the ability to, uh, you know, roll back configuration set a configuration from this command center and then uh, the 16 is to restart the PHP so if you're having some sort of issue with the web interface of it that uh, you know they have a, a menu to restart that so that is the basics like I said we're gonna go over more of these things in depth in my series on PFSense so that concludes my initial about uh, our initial introduction to PFSense. We didn't go over much in here, but you can unbox it, hook it up, get connected to the serial console, and then I pointed you to the, to the docs. Uh, I will leave a link in the, the show notes about how to get to the docs. It basically, you just go to docs.netgate.com and that'll get you there. And our series, we're gonna go through how to set up each thing in here. We're going to go over the web interface and much, much more. So stay tuned for our next video in this series. If you got something out of this video that I would appreciate it if you like and follow. And if you'd like to support me directly, you can uh, check me out at Buy Me a Coffee. I'll link in the description and I'll pop that up here too. So thanks for joining me and I look forward to our next tutorial.